dynamically upgrade CA1 tape management from 12.6 to 14.0. The steps to dynamically upgrade from 12.6 to 14.0 follow eight simple steps. And we'll go through each of these in more detail. First step is to back up the TMC and Audit dataset. Simply run your standard TMS copy backup utility job like is run on a daily basis and sometimes multiple times a day. So just make sure you run a current copy of to back up your TMC and Audit file. Stop the CTS address space if it is active. Just to show you a quick example, you would simply issue the stop command with the P space, the name of your CTS address space. In my case, it was CTSCA1R. So I simply issued the P space CTSCA1R. The DBS subtask and the command processor ended, and the subtask ended. That stops the CTS address space. Then I'm going to run an IB copy to back up my existing CA1 link listed library. Always a good idea to have a backup when you're upgrading. The JCL I used was simply a backup JCL that I had created to do an IB copy to an output file that I just called backup.ca1base.kylib. So it's just a simple IB copy to back up the library that currently contains my CA1 12.6 libraries in it. The output is simply an output listing all of the files, all of the members that were copied. Now, the CA1 base library contained 435 members. If yours contain a few additional modules, that's most likely exits. Probably not an issue. If you have significantly different numbers, that means that you've got other products, other modules from other products in the same library. It's not a dedicated library. So that might affect things as far as the next step. The next step is to either empty the contents of your 12.6 library and reload with 14.0. However, if CA1 is installed with other products in a single library, you don't want to empty it because those other products would be lost. So then you would simply want to just copy with replace and then compress the library. So if CA1 is installed in a linked list library that is dedicated, you can simply delete it and go on from there. However, if the CA1 is installed with other products, you don't want to simply empty it. Instead, you want to do a copy with replace. Now, in my case, I created a two-step IB copy. The first step copies the modules in, and the second step compresses the library that I copied into. There are a total of four libraries that must be copied in, an, in their entirety. The CTAP link, which is the load library, the CTAP MENU, that's the English messages, the panels, and the tables. So you want to copy the link list as well as the ISPF messages, panels, and tables library from your target library to your active production libraries, and then compress the libraries. Now, if you have a dynamic linked list library, another option is simply to add the 14.0 linked list library ahead of the existing 12.6 linked list library. You would do this with the dynamic setprog command, setprog linked list add. You would give it the name of your dynamic linked list library, the dataset name of your 14.0 CTAP link library, and you would indicate that you want this library added at the top. Once that setprog command is finished, you would do an LLA refresh, just like you would if you had done either of the other two options. 
emptying the library and replacing it, or doing a copy with replace. In any case, you want to do the LLA refresh once the library contents have been copied or added. If you do the dynamic link list method, make sure you go back and update Syswan ParmLib so that your production prog XX member reflects the 14.0 link list library name. The next step, once the libraries have been dynamically refreshed, is to dynamically load the 14.0 resident modules. That's ex that can be performed by executing the Chi-RIM proc specifying the product of L0E0 init as your init program. The product, of course, is CA1MVS. And you would also have a reinit statement. You would, the first one says reinit LPA equals all, SVC equals your, your SVC number, SMF equals yes. And you specify the load lib. The second set of control statements is the same product, but the parm here is reinit comma OSI equals reinit. And again, you have the load lib that points to your 14.0 load lib library. The JCL to do that can be done as a batch job, simply executing program CAI RIM having the sysu dump and the cag8 message library both set to sysout, auto commands and keys. And here you see that my two sets of control statements are simply back to back. The first set of three lines, the product, the parm, and the load lib are for the LPA all. In my case, SVC equals 208 because that's my SVC number and SMF equals yes. The second set has the OSI equals reinit. When I execute these, when I execute these, you can see on the console log, I've done my LLA refresh, and then I've submitted the L0E init batch job. The batch job will load all of the modules, starting with the TMS00 SVC module, as well as all of the other modules that are part of 14.0 that are loaded into resident CSA or ECSA. So all of the modules are loaded, then the restore and reapply of the actual in operating system intercepts are performed, and finally the job ends with a return code. Return code 00, and the job ends. That has dynamically loaded the new 14.0 load modules into ECSA. The next step is to run TMS init. If you do not want to enable any of the new 14.0 options at this time, and I would recommend you not enabling any of them at this time, simply run TMS init pointing to your existing options library. If you do want to enable some of the new options, you can do so, but then you want to make sure that your options member pointed to by the TMO OPTXX is not the same one that's used by the 12.6 system. If it is, you won't be able to backgrade to 12.6 without having changed those options. So you simply run TMS init. So here you can see that TMS init started. I have all of my standard TMS 0, 120, 160 messages, the initialization processing completed. I have my IEF TMS 0 WTOR like I always do, only now of course it says 14.0. I go ahead and respond U to that message and CA1 now becomes active and all of my health checks are reapplied. And at that point, TMS init ends. If you want, you can look at the output from that TMS init, and you can see all of the options. The new options that were added with 14.0, RP, GDG, EXPSEC-A, and EXPSEC-V are all listed at the bottom. And the default values, zeros or none, 
are specified. That's because I did not specify those parameters, those options in my TMO OPT00 member so that if I need to, I can back out to 12.6 without having to worry about any control statement errors from TMS init. Once TMS init has completed, you are now upgraded to 14.0. At this point, you can restart the CTS address space if it had previously been active. And you would do that, of course, by simply issuing the start space CTS. So here I did my start space CTS CA1R. Again, that's the name of my CTS address space. And you can see that dump command health checks all started, the dump and health checks completed, and the DBS subtask is running. So the CTS address space has now been restarted. Finally, if you are using the CA1 ISPF interface to check some volumes, check the status of CA1, whatever, you must log off completely from TSO and back on again to ensure that no 12.6 modules are left active in your TSO address space itself. So completely log off of TSO and back on before you attempt to reuse the CA1 ISPF interface now that you are active on 14.0. If you want to, if you run into any kind of problems and you need to back out to 12.6, you would simply follow the same steps but change the 14.0 library names to the 12.6 library names. A dynamic backout from 12 to 12.6 is only possible if you have not yet IPL'd with 14.0 installed. Once you have IPL'd with 14.0 active, you must IPL to go back to 12.6. You can still go back anytime you want. The TMC is completely compatible to 12.6 or 14.0, but you must re-IPL back to 12.6 if you've IPL'd with 14.0 active. The only additional note I will make is that if you do a dynamic upgrade from 12.6 to 14.0, the new TMS space status command, which is simply an operator command, TMS space status, will not work until after you've done the next IPL. That enhancement does require an IPL to activate it. So the TMS status command, the other new options, the RPGDG and the security check for long expiration dates, those can be activated dynamically anytime you want, as long as you dynamically upgrade it to 14.0. But the TMS status command will require an IPL before it becomes active. This concludes the video on how to dynamically upgrade from 12.6 to 14.0. You should not have any problems. As always, we recommend you do so with current maintenance applied to your 14.0 libraries. For more resources on 14.0, please feel free to visit our online documentation website, docops.ca.com. Thank you for your attention.